Madam President. A bill to lift the U.S. government's $31.4 trillion debt ceiling is heading to President Joe Biden's desk after the Senate voted to pass the bipartisan deal late Thursday night and avert what would have been the country's first ever default. The yeas are 63, the nays are 36, the 60 vote threshold having been achieved, the bill is passed. Nearly all Democrats and some Republicans in the Senate approved the bill, which had been passed by the House the day before. Lawmakers have been racing against the clock following months of partisan bickering. The U.S. Treasury had warned it would run out of funds starting June the 5th if Congress failed to act by then. In a statement, Biden said he would sign the bill into law as soon as possible, adding, quote, This bipartisan agreement is a big win for our economy and the American people. Still, it was a bitter victory, and both sides took swipes at the other following the vote. After steering the legislation through, Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer blamed his Republican colleagues for pushing the country to the brink of a historic debt default. Default was the giant sword hanging over America's head. But because of the good work of President Biden, as well as Democrats in the House and Democrats in the Senate, we are not defaulting. While Senate Republican leader Mitch McConnell tweeted, tonight the Senate voted to avoid default and begin to curb Washington Democrats' addiction to reckless spending. With this piece of legislation, the statutory limits on federal borrowing will be suspended until January 1, 2025. Unlike most other developed countries, the United States limits the amount of debt the government can borrow regardless of any spending allocated by the legislature. U.S. and Russia are dangerously close to an armed conflict. This year, 2023, New Delhi will be the capital of global diplomacy. For a country as diverse as ours, with 88% of the population illiterate, it was a very big deal to write a constitution, and that too, the world's largest. Meanwhile, if we may, here's a Republic Day gift from India for the BBC. A list of suggestions for the BBC for their upcoming documentaries. Number one, the Kohinoor and the Colonial Loot. Number two, an outdated monarchy and unhealthy obsession with the royals. Number three, racism in 2023. We're waiting. and Russia are dangerously close to an armed conflict. This year, 2023, New Delhi will be the capital of global diplomacy. For a country as diverse as ours, with 88% of the population illiterate, it was a very big deal to write a constitution, and that too, the world's largest. Meanwhile, if we may, here's a Republic Day gift from India for the BBC. A list of suggestions for the BBC for their upcoming documentaries. Number one, the Kohinoor and the Colonial Loot. Number two, an outdated monarchy and unhealthy obsession with the royals. Number three, racism in 2023. We're waiting.